board to discuss the um, committee, the Littleton train station committee uh, final report to the planning board. And um, um, this is our first opportunity to share this with everyone. And um, I thank you all for coming. And um, Maren, you have slides, but we're gonna start with uh, Peter, right? <laughs> Actually, um, Peter's prepared to uh, go over the uh, design guidelines uh, a little later in the, in the slideshow. Oh, that's right, that's right. We're gonna start with that. Um, yeah. So we have a brief slide presentation of, um, I know Delisa doesn't want to handle it, she's gonna throw it off to me, but of the eight months, 10 months that we've, um, uh, we've been working on this as a uh, committee and now it's uh, ready for, um, for it being sent over to the planning board so we can start holding public hearings. And uh, as, as that's our goal, we would like to, to share this with interested parties and the select board so that uh, they can see the work that the committee has done and they can, we can start with comments from them once they've had a chance to say it. So having said that, this is uh, after talking with Joe, Joe Layden, um, uh, the board, the committee decided that the best way to go would be a 40R smart growth overlay district. And we're gonna start small so that uh, we can bring something that's digestible to the town for a spring town meeting. So we're just talking about the uh, area right at the train station for the 40 hours micro overlay district, see how that works out. Um, and uh, if it's successful, then the talk about possibly extend, expanding it. But uh, this is the map of where we're talking. I think everyone has a pretty good idea what we're talking about. It's the land right beside the old Nordbloom property, right next to the where the parking for the train station is. So um, there's 495, there's Route 2, the train station's right where it says Littleton Station, right in the middle, that's the property that we're talking about. Um, so that this is the area. Okay. Specifically yeah. where it says potential smart growth, that, that plot right there. Yeah, right, right there. There we go, sorry, I'm having trouble. There you go. Yeah, that's a, that's a better look. And there's the um, area that does include the Life Care Center. Uh, it's our hope that uh, we can enter it. The, the Life Care Center would be interested in uh, expanding their operation there and maybe have some uh, independent living, uh, more assisted living up there on their parcel that abuts this parcel. And also, if at some point we can talk to them about a potential second way in to keep some of the traffic off of Foster Street. Um, our hope is that once they know that we're serious about this and moving forward, that they will engage the town and talk about those things. So this is the, um, uh, the slide from where, where, what brought us here. We have the master plan imp implementation, um, goals and objectives. Um, the thought, the talk has been to put uh, a, a higher density population out there to get more affordability for the seniors, um, more diverse housing out there. So that was um, that was that's all coming from uh, what we took out of the master plan and what the residents in the town have been telling us. They want more diverse, uh, more diverse housing stock to uh, be able to choose from. So and this is uh, this is the start of it. And okay. I don't want to read all of this, but let me, let me take a look at it. But um, it was started with the, just a brief history. We started with um, the fifty thousand dollar grant we got from the state. We hired Judy Barrett to um, uh, give us an overview of what we could possibly uh, uh, think about what was going on out there. She looked at the whole area, and then we hired Dobson and Flinker to. To refine it a little, give us some guidelines, some design criteria, um, take some considerations of the other 40 hours that were done in other, other towns. Joe Layden's been very instrumental in that because um, the 40 hours, what he was instrumental in getting in Grafton. So we've tapped into that resource. And uh, <clears throat> this is what we're looking for 
in the train station area, walkability, living in a mixed use of homes and businesses out there, um, trying to keep the character of Littleton intact, but put a higher density out there. So planning for Littleton station, um, some of the outreach. Yes, those are some of the events that we held, right? To try to gather the information. I didn't hear you, Chuck. What did you say? Those are some of the events that we held in order to gather yeah. to gather information from the community and find out what it was that people were looking for, what people wanted, and, and you know, yeah, absolutely in, in support the of the master plan. Yeah, yeah I think that's something. I think Chuck, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's something we really want to emphasize here is that we didn't just make this stuff up. I mean, we had a lot of public input from surveys to um, visioning sessions, listening sessions, etc. So. Yeah, just jump right in there. I can use all the help I can get. All right. Yeah, it wasn't, like you said, it wasn't done in a vacuum. Right. One of the reasons we did go with the smart growth is because we are going to get um, money from the state to help at least this this kind of uh, money for the smart growth. We got a one-time fee of $3,000 per unit per housing unit. <laughs> and hopefully, excuse me, um, we're going to try to hit everybody we can for help with infrastructure, with uh, making the units more affordable. Uh, you know, we'll put our ha ha hat in our hand out to anybody who will give us some money. And hopefully the select, the select board will be instrumental in trying to see what state grants we can get and um, uh, other things like that. So that's yep. why we decided to go with the, with the 40R. Also, it gives us more... Not it's it's not that it's cookie cutter. We, other towns have done it, so it gives us a better foothold of what we can expect as a finished product, seeing how it's been done in other towns. So rather than going with a special permit process that the planning board in the town would have to engage, at least we have guidelines and um, uh, a track record using the 40R for this for this overlay. And if I may jump in, Mark, the 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 um the governor and his administration and his cabinet are, are aware of this location. Um, they've got some interest in, in this being developed with uh, a focus on smart growth, on, with a focus on housing, with a focus on uh, proximity to transportation, which is what is one of the qualifications for the 40R smart growth district. And it, because of their awareness of the project, it will likely where you can't guarantee anything, but it'll likely open doors to your point about the, the select board looking for grant opportunities and so forth. Um, whether it's mass works grants or um, complete streets, there, there are different things that it, this, this will afford us the opportunity to apply to. Yeah, that, that's, that's great, Chuck. And uh, to refine your point even a little more, um, Littleton has been the poster child of um, being ahead of the curve and all the things that we've done in the in the past, and now with the uh, the smart growth on the train station, that's what uh, Governor Baker has been pushing, and um, we'd be a great great one to start with and be a nice poster child for this. So hopefully, he'll um, he'll um, see what Littleton's doing and um, reward us accordingly. <laughs> anyway. Uh, there are some questions in here about what, what we're going to do, but... Um, Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. I just wanted to talk about this. Well, we talked about the state grant. Uh, how will we, you know, we're going to have to look at the, how we're going to uh, talk about getting the, the wastewater be addressed. Uh, we'd like to engage with the water department with the sewer coming, uh, hopefully being on spring ballot. Uh, maybe the sewer can be over there. Um, there's going to be a lot of questions um, in the next couple of months that we're going to probably be fielding from residents and from uh, uh, different agencies to see what we can and can't do out there. So you can go to the next one, Myron. Um, so uh, there's a, now a series of four or five slides on the um, design guidelines and Peter Flinkers is prepared to do the what Reader's Digest version of the design guidelines. Okay, so I'll turn it over to Peter right now and let him go over the um, what we the, the look and the feel of what we we're trying to accomplish out there. All right, <clears throat> thanks, Mike. Um, great to be back in Littleton virtually. 
Uh, the, the state 40 art legislation provides for design guidelines, which kind of uh, create a nice balance between uh, the 40R, which allows somewhat more density than is allowed today. But um, if you give that to the developers, what they have to comply with is a higher level of, of design. Uh, so that makes up for uh, some of the issues that might come out of having uh, somewhat more development. So we've put together design guidelines that reflect a number of other 40R districts and what they've done, as well as the state legislation. They start with some general guiding principles that sort of show how, you know, what the town's goals are. The first of these is that the plan should reflect the larger planning goals of Littleton as stated in the master plan and in the Littleton station vision plan. Next slide, please. The second one is that the plan should connect and enhance uh, connections to the train station, the surrounding facilities. So we don't want this to be just isolated pods of apartments or other developments separated by big patches of green space with separate driveways. We want everything to be integrated directly to the train station so that it, you know, one enhances the other. Next one, please. Uh, we also, in the design guidelines, we want the, the plan to enhance Littleton's visual character, to build on the quality of the open space and the views, to build on the kind of architecture and the character of that architecture. We don't necessarily require historic buildings, but we want something that doesn't look like it was anywhere in the United States. It looks like it fits in New England. It looks like it fits in uh, Littleton and also supports the people of Littleton and the quality of life in the town. Next one, please. Uh, part of that is that we want the plan to be organized around what we call the public realm, which is the place, the streets and the streetscapes and the parks and the, the roads themselves. And all of that is the places where people actually do their business and, and congregate. And so we want that to be the core of the design, not the separate buildings. So the buildings shape that public space, that public realm. It's connected. It's uh it's easy to find your way around and it's linked together. So it all feels like a coherent village rather than just a series of isolated, as I say, isolated development pods. Next one, please. And then we want um, the project to support, you know, social and economic and environmental sustainability. Obviously there's a great um, interest in this is reflected in the master plan. And this includes everything from, you know, being uh, energy efficient to building on the train station, which makes the whole thing much more sustainable because people don't necessarily need a car, and but to also support other kinds of transportation and use this as kind of a, a multimodal hub. And then to meet potentially lead or other environmental performance standards as part of the project. So the next one, please. So the, the remainder of the design guidelines, it's broken down to I think five or six other standards. There's one for streetscape design, one for parking, there's architecture, landscaping, lighting, and signage. And each of those is sort of organized, as you see here, for architecture. There's kind of a general guiding principle for architecture. You know, what, what are we trying to achieve? And again, this is talking about that balance of trying to make it fit into Littleton, even if it's not a historical looking building, it's something that reflects the traditions in the town. Um, and then in addition to that, there are specific standards which say you must do this or you shall do this in terms of specific dimension requirements or things that have to be included. And then there's lots of examples of how, you know, how can this approach be met? I mean, how can the standard be met by different approaches? So this has a lot of examples of projects from other places. And a lot of these are ones that were rated highly in the public workshops and, and the other discussions that we had uh, during the, the master plan development. So we've sort of gone directly from what people said they liked and tried to work that into the design guidelines so that potential developers would see what the town has already considered a good range of development types. I think that's it for me. A little bit about the process. Um, the design guidelines uh, have been completed. Uh, they'll be vetted, I guess, for a little while longer. And then there's a preliminary public hearing, which has to be completed before the application is submitted 
um, Department of Housing Community Development. Then the DHCD uh, issues a letter of eligibility and says, we welcome you to create a 40-hour process. Uh, please go through the, the approval, which includes his uh, adoption of the zoning. Uh, you have to go back to the state with evidence of that adoption. They give you a letter of approval. And then there's local project approval at town meeting and then ongoing and reporting and documentation afterwards. Uh, so they've done a really good job of setting this all down very carefully and you can read all about it in the state 40R guidance. Is there any more, Marin? Oh, right, there's um, a lot I, of, we don't yeah, really go into all these this, details. Yeah, at this point, um, I, I didn't know if Mark wanted to have Mark Rassicott um, share the work that MAPC will be doing to help with the DHCD application. Aaron, you read my mind. It's like we talked about this earlier. Yes, we've, we've asked Mark Rassicott to come in to talk to us about um, the maps that we're going to be using and getting us through DHCD. Um, I know Mark is on. Can he uh, shed a little light on how the process will go and how long he thinks it's going to take? Well, um, the process is that uh, we, we have already started. We've had some conversations with Marin. We'll be meeting again next week. The, uh, the data center folks from MAPC who have done uh, these 40-hour applications in a number of other communities are uh, beginning to look at the, uh, the background materials for the, the properties in Littleton. Um, we anticipate that uh, it's gonna take at least a couple of months, um, but we're gonna try to hurry it along um, because we know you're shooting for Springtown meeting. Uh, we have done this quickly before uh, for instance, in the town of Rockland, we had to work very closely with DHCD as we were preparing the various materials, um, keeping them apprised of, of, of the details of the changes to the bylaw as it was going through the, the hearing process and uh, you know, how that affected the, the maps and the, the various calculations. So, um, we're going to do our best to to work with you over the next several months um, to make sure that the application is completed uh, and filed in time so that you'll um, have a preliminary approval, at least on the application, before you go to town meeting. Um, there's a number of, of questions that we'll be working with Marin and the planning board on uh, because there are still um, some items uh, to be determined in the in detail in the bylaw. Uh, for instance, the exact boundaries of subdistricts, um, the width of buffers to the surrounding residential properties, et cetera. Um, so those will all have to be worked out before we can finalize the mapping and finalize the application. Uh, but you know, we're looking forward to, to working with you on this over the next couple of months. Thank you, Mark. Um, what do you get up now? There we go. So this is kind of um, the meat of the what we're talking about. Density of the units, affordability. We want, uh, <clears throat> we want AMI at 80% or less. Uh, um, we want a diverse population out there, not just apartments. We want... Uh, uh, townhouses, we want garden style apartments, townhouses, cottages, condos, maybe some single family. Um, um, it's kind of a mix of everything. We're trying to um, give a diversity out there so that uh, people will have choices. Um, some workforce housing, senior housing. Um, the, we've got the uh, overlay zoning. It's going to be all inclusive. Um, um, this is just kind of there. Thank you. Okay, questions. Yeah, these are the the two points of our contact. Jo, uh, as I said earlier, Joe Joe Layden's done this at Grafton. He's um, was instrumental in answering the 
the committee's questions that we had while we were drafting this. Obviously, Myron will be right in the middle of it as well, and Mark Lanscock to, to, uh, as well. Um, nah, you can keep. Go ahead. I'm yeah, easy. I apologize. I did have a, a, another slide that apparently I put in the wrong place that includes the, um, the whole 40R team. It includes um, Peter Flinker of Dodson and Flinker with the design yeah, guidelines. Just, yeah, Mark Peter Rathicott right. and his team at MAPC. So, well, sorry. where is that slide, Mark? Uh, it's, it's missing. No, oh, missing. Oh. Yes. Okay. I will get, we'll get all the contact information to uh, the rest of the board and to the select board so that they have, well, obviously you can, you can talk to Joe anytime you want, but <clears throat> that's the lines of communication as we move forward. And after this meeting, we'll be scheduling probably, um, we'll probably have a meeting every month up until just before town meeting to get this all vetted and uh, ready, ready for town meeting. So I guess that's it for the slide presentation. Um, does any, anybody on the board have any, I'll ask my board first and I'll ask the select board if they have any questions. Does uh, anyone have any questions? Um, Anna, any questions or any comments? Can you let me hang here? Anna, do you have any questions or comments? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, I was oh. meeting. Uh, well, it certainly looks like there's been a lot of work done on this, so that's great. Um, I think I have a couple of big picture questions. Um, and then whenever we do get into the bylaw and the guidelines, I'll, I'll have comments then. So I think from a big picture perspective, um, one of the, the questions I had was in terms of how this proposed development will work with the train station um, logistically. And um, I know that um, from the map, it looks like it's it's all very contiguous. But but how will it work together with people who are getting on the train at you know seven a.m. People getting off the train, parking, you know, all of that. It's great to be able to have people living in in that part of Littleton who can then just walk to the train station. That that's really fabulous. But what about for folks who don't? Um. Well, the, the, obviously the parking lots that are there are going to remain there, and it's the hope that maybe some more parking that will be dedicated just to the residents of the town of Littleton could be added as well, because as you know, once this pandemic ends, the parking out there is first come, first serve, and it's usually packed, so I'm hoping to add a little bit of parking to it, but um, like you said, most we're hoping that a lot of people will not use their cars, just come down to the uh, train station, uh, come down from their housing houses and, and use the trains to go into Boston or wherever they need to go. So there will be some, um, hopefully some use that way. And obviously we're gonna try to make it bicycle and pedestrian friendly to get there as well. The, uh, the goal is to um, finish the sidewalks on, on Foster Street all the way up to Taylor and I believe going the other way as well, we're trying to get funds, hopefully have funds for that, so that it'll be walkable, bikeable, um, and, um, you know, it'll be a true center, center by the train station. And- Will, will there be any additional parking? The yes, the thought, the thought was to build another parking lot as well and make it, dead, as I, said, I think I said earlier, to try to make it dedicated to Littleton residents first, but another parking lot off into the, the behind the two parking lots that are there, somewhere in there where the two parking lots are now. And if I may, um, while we're talking about parking, um, there will be 30 additional parking spaces at the Amazon facility up on Taylor Street. And then once the... Um, multi-use path is uh, constructed um, from along Foster Street from Taylor up past the commuter rail station. There will be a small spur of that path that goes off to the um, parking lot at one of the Foster Street um, office buildings. So that um, owner of that office building um, would be in a position to offer parking on his private lot for additional commuter parking. Great. 
Anyone else, any other questions, Anna? Well, uh, with respect to the uh, different modes of transportation to get to and from that particular area of town, um, has there been discussion um, with, uh, with respect to that as to whether or not there would be, for example, um, uh, the, the circular that goes to the train station right now, would, would it go through the development? Um, would it uh, pick up, drop off folks, for example, that might be going from one part of town, say at the IBM site, back into that particular part of the community? Has Have those discussions been had as well? Um, I'll, I'll jump in on that one. Um, right. Yes, the town, town's been in discussions with um, uh, Crosstown Connect and um, Mart about the shuttle service and um, hoping to expand that service uh, once demand is is back is back up. Great, that's good to know. Okay, um, Jeff, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, I'm, you know, in support of the whole concept. I, I, uh, I guess I would add a few things. Number one, I really enjoy the images that are produced by various, um, you know, planning efforts throughout the state. And I just hope our board can hold, if we do attract development, can attract a developer who's going to do something along the lines of those images, because it's definitely not a, you know, done deal. Secondly, and this is a general point about development in Littleton <clears throat> along 495. Is there any planning um, efforts that can be made to abate the noise? I mean, there are some neighborhoods in Littleton that are overwhelmed with noise. And I noticed on the sort of proof plan that all the buildings had been put as far toward 495 as possible. And I'm just wondering if that's a health uh, a health issue. Um, it's quite, you know, there's quite a lot of noise. So I think that should be taken into account. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Delisa, do you want to add anything? Uh, uh, Jeff, I'll get back to you about what the placement of the buildings real quick. The thought process that we went through was because of topography there to put the big massive buildings way in the back so that the, uh, Topography is going to hide a lot of it. So you, if it's a three-story building, you're probably only going to see a story and a half. And yeah. obviously, because of the noise, I'm sure we'll be, they'll be looking at doing something to mitigate the noise inside the units. Whether it's, well, I, uh, I think it would, from the people on Foster, I think any buildings there would mitigate noise for right. them. I mean, it, you know, that's a good thing. Um, but anyway, it's just a consideration. But in general, I'm very supportive of, very supportive of the effort. And I think it's an appropriate spot. Jeff, I know you, you mentioned your concern about um, making sure that whatever is, is built there ties in with Littleton. I think that's one of the reasons why we really felt the design guidelines were important. I mean, they're not, they're not nearly as strict as um, the, the ones are for the, the common, but there are some very... Um, no, I, I reviewed them. They're very comprehensive yeah. Yeah. In, so. in sort of descriptions, and it gives a lot of latitude to whoever is approving whatever project to. But I, I just hope we would attract a developer who's going to hire someone who can bring, you know, some... Uh, some character. Some, some character yeah. to this, yeah. uh, and it would make it more desirable. Boxes. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else to Lisa? No, I think you covered it. I'm more interested in hearing um, other so, people's questions. So I'll open it up to the select board. Anyone have any questions or comments that um, seeing it pretty much for the first time? We've been living it for about five months. So. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Martinari. Uh, no, it's a, it was a great presentation. I know that you have been working very hard on it for a number of months on. Um, I was proud to be part of um, this project at the beginning, at the inception, and I like the way that you've picked up and continued to run with it, Delisa, yourself, um, Chuck, and Matthew Nordhaus. 
Um, it is a very important project and to the point of Delisa's point is um, it's part of the master plan. This is what we, we you know, development where it makes sense um, for the town of Littleton. And, you know, I think it's just important for people to realize that we do need the housing in Littleton. Um, as much as it may seem that there's development going on everywhere, there's this project in particular will really meet a need for our community, especially the affordability component, um, as well as a variety of housing types, which is something that we're lacking. Um, what I'd like to do is, in, I'll defer to um, the Littleton Station Group and maybe the Planning Board, is really trying to um, connect on the state level about this project. Governor Baker and um, Lieutenant Governor Polito have spoken about these types of projects at different forums that I've attended, you know, before the pandemic. Um, and I think that they would really be interested in this project. Um, so I just, that is something that I think the select board, um, we should discuss with Mr. Ansaldi um, and just see if we can really bring this specifically to their attention to try to leverage that connection um, with them as much as possible, because it is exactly what the governor has been asking um, municipalities to do is to create this type of housing in this area. Um, so I, I'm excited about the project. I know it's in the early stages, but I think um, it's off to a great start. And I hope that the residents really take the time to look into it and, and um, ask the questions you know, ahead of time and um, support the project, especially from the affordability standpoint. If we can really um, achieve housing below 80% AMI, um, it's going to really meet it, the need of a, a large demographic in our, our town. So appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. And, and any help you get us with the state would be great. And also, you and I are both on the Affordable Housing Trust. We'll obviously be circling back with the Affordable Housing Trust to see if there's um, we can get monies from that group as well to try to to try to try get the AMI below 80, as yeah. much below 80 as we can. Right, I think that's a great idea. I really do. So we can definitely have those discussions. I don't know if there's any other members of the select board that wanted to comment. If I may, um, I think for a lot, a lot of us, this is a long time coming. I'm very impressed with the work that's done. It seems to fit that site perfectly. For us that have been around a long time, that Northern Bloom land has sat and sat and sat with all kinds of discussions, what could be done. And I think this is the answer. Um, my question, Mark, would be is that I see there's a development on both sides of the tracks. Do we have our land, the landowners um, involved in this? Yes, actually, the uh, Longs are they're on the they're on the uh, call tonight. They own the land that is the Nordbloom property, and we included the land on the other side, which is um, not really set up for for uh, residential, but could be a, more of a commercial component. That's where the old Let's let's date ourselves. The old Pella building. How about that? Remember <laughs> that? So they were the old Pella that we included that for the first phase, so that if there was some development, commercial development that wanted to go on, it could go on over there as well. So, but yeah, the um, um, I don't know if the lawners want to speak. Uh, they're more than welcome to, but they are the owners of, of the north, the the, um, the old as we call it, the old Nordbloom site, and they have been. Um, uh, involved in the meetings as we've been progressing as well. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll hear more from them, from the residents in town to kind of put the finishing touches on what uh, the Lisa and her group, um, this uh, station uh, committee has started with and we'll get it ready. And it's our goal to have it ready for Springtown meeting. Um, Paul, you had your hand up. Um, do you have a question? Uh, not a question mark, but I just really want to extend my uh, thanks and appreciation. I'm impressed with what I was able to see tonight. Other members of our board have been more directly involved, our chair, Cindy, uh, from the get-go, and then more recently, uh, Chuck and Matthew, but I'm, I'm very much interested in this, and, and I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the, um, what the working group's been able to do, the planning board's um, taking charge of this proactively, the consultants, every, everybody's work shines through. And I, you know, I do want to uh, uh, extend my uh, um, uh, agreement to a sentiment raised by uh, Jeff Yates earlier that it's, the plans look great. I, I'm uh, bullish that we'll get it through, but the implementation is key as well. And 
you know, that's, that's what we all got to keep our, our focus on making sure that the good plans become good development. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Matthew, you've been on the board with us. Do you have any comments or questions or concerns? I do. I mean, I think um, it's been really interesting watching this come together. I, uh, I come at it to some extent from being on the housing authority and um, also the, you know, on the COA visioning committee. I feel like one of the things that it seems like we've been spinning our wheels for a long time on and, you know, no, no, no offense to anyone here. Like we just don't seem to be able to do senior housing in a way that's really been serving the town. And uh, one of the things that's come to light with the affordable housing trust information, especially is just how, how needed that sort of thing is. And I, I'm, I'm very excited and I um, very much hope that this solves that and, uh, and provides a, a large, you know, inventory of, of, of decent, you know, small, affordable, not cheap houses that the seniors in Littleton can stay here and participate in the community um, and, you know, free up some of the larger homes, which they, they just don't need to, to be in anymore. Um, I hear it, I hear it over and over and yeah, that's all. I, it's just, it's another goal that this can accomplish. And I'm, I'm excited that, uh, that we're going in that direction. Thank you. Uh, Delisa, um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for all your hard work running the committee. Um, you, you've been behind the scenes. You've been doing it for six months. I know you've um, passed it off to the planning board now, and now as a member of the planning board, you'll be actively involved in it. But Delisa was great um, keeping it all together, keeping the meetings going, and uh, getting the information and doing all the behind-the-scenes stuff that has to go through to, in order to get a product that we have that we're showing you this evening. And I just want to thank you for the hard work that you did on that. Well, I want to thank you for making the presentation. I just did not have the bandwidth and, and I appreciate you stepping forward and helping me out. So, you know, I'm, I'm shy and, you know, I took all my, <laughs> took all my respect to, yeah, I didn't exactly to talk to all of you, but, um, you know, Mara and I had a, had a dress rehearsal. Everything went, seemed to go pretty good. So, um, I, I, uh, thank you. I'm glad. Chuck, do you have anything? Are you, Maybe Chuck's not there. I guess he's not there right now. Anthony, how about any questions or concerns? No? No, sorry, I was typing an email. Um, oh, so like Cindy, I think like, you know, I was involved in this a little bit when I was here the last time. So it's great to see all the progress that, that you have made as a committee. Um, I think it's, this is a great uh, project to bring to town meeting and uh, really well done by everybody. Great. Hey, we have people, is anyone... Mark, does anyone have their hand raised? Does anyone want to speak other than the two boards? Hey, um, nobody has their hand raised right at the moment. Um, okay. I'll keep watch. Why don't we talk about a schedule then? When are, are, when are we officially having our first meeting on this? We're not doing February. We're doing March. Is that, is that, was that the game plan? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So... No. Yeah. So hopefully by the time we meet the, uh, the first Thursday in March... Um, Mark Ranscock will be uh, honing in on what we need for the, the DHCD, the maps. So we'll have um, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about the um, um, specifics of what's what we're presenting, and we'll probably have a meeting in March, and uh, probably another one. We're probably going to have to have another one in March, and then one in April, and to be ready for town meeting in May. Mm -hmm. I would I would think. Well, we have to have a couple of them. <clears throat> yep. um, so obviously everyone's going to be uh, invited to come share that with us. Um, obviously it looks like it's going to be Zoomed for a while, but um, we'll you know, obviously make it a, everybody, a bit, uh, the times and the dates available to everyone so that there's no, uh, you know, so everyone knows when we're going to be meeting. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think Joe, Joe needs to, would like to chime in. Go ahead. You didn't have his hand up, though. I have my hand up. Um, right. uh, I think, um, you know, in the little station, you know, people could chime in. Um, if the planning board is meeting in March, uh, we may need to provide MAPC with a little bit of feedback, and we may need to have the, um, the group just 
meet in a couple of weeks just to maybe give them some guidance and sort of go over some concepts before that planning board meeting. Okay, that, that's fine. And then while you were on, Joe, you did a great job staring us to the 40R. I have to be honest, I wasn't uh, a fan of it right off the bat, having you know been on the planning board for a while in a small little town. But the fact that we can, we can um, uh, use all the resources that the state has and we get to see what other towns have done with the 40R, I think you were right on when you uh, steered us that way. And I think we've got a better product a better project now because we're going to go the 40 hour mode. Uh, again, I thank you for your hard work and in, in the meeting and all the meetings that we've had as well. And same Mark, with, with Peter too. I want to thank Peter. Oh for yeah, Peter, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. Peter, Peter, you did a great job. Um, uh, I know we, uh, we uh, beat you up on the price and everything else. And I think we got our money's worth and I think you did a great job on it. Uh, but Mark, you had a, you had a question or a concern? Um, I was just going to agree with Joe that in order to uh, move this along in time for town meeting, um, it would be good to have a meeting of, with at least a subcommittee of folks to try to get some answers um, uh, regarding a series of questions. We're going to begin by talking with Marin on Monday and trying to hammer out all the questions that we have, some of which um, you know, she may be able to answer without the board because of previous discussions, but uh, there will be a need for um, discussions about sub-districts and that kind of thing, um, assumptions on the types of structures that would be within each of the sub-districts. Um, that, that would all be very important for MAPC to be able to complete the mapping and to begin to do the, the density calculations. All right, so Delisa, you don't have to hook yet. So we'll probably have to have another meeting and maybe if Mark can get the questions, the planning board can at least take a look at them or be shown the questions so we can try to respond to them on our meeting, uh, after our meeting on the 4th. And then we have a meeting with the subcommittee maybe the second week of February, something like that, so that we can get answers back to Mark. Will that work? Yeah. I'm uh, you're good. Chuck, are you good with a meeting like in the second week of February sometime? Yeah, I should be fine. And Matthew? I'm in. Okay. Yeah, we can do it. You get the questions yep. tomorrow, and we'll let the board take – the planning board take a look at it, and then the committee will will take a look at it and get some – we'll try to get you some feedback uh, mid-February. Okay, that, that would yep. work really well. Um, the other thing I just wanted to point out um, – we're still trying to wrap our hands around it, uh, but the, the newly passed economic development legislation had some language in it that basically says that, uh, you know, communities that are within the MBTA sub-district uh, have to have uh, by right multifamily zoning within a half mile of the train station in order to retain eligibility for a wide variety of state grants. So Littleton is ahead of the game here uh, because this 40R district uh, meets that qualification perfectly. And so by working on this and hopefully passing it at town meeting, you will be uh, um, at the leader, one of the leaders of the pack in implementing that new economic development uh, legislation. Um, I think also that this will qualify under the provisions of housing choice, which were with, within the economic development bill, which means that I don't think you're going to need a two thirds majority at town meeting to pass this. I think this will be 50% plus one. I think we, we kind of assumed that that would be the, the case that it would, it would need just, yeah, just a little bit over 50%, yeah. Mary, you've been listening. Do you have something to say? Hopefully, I know you've come to all our meetings. I know you've been trying. We've been trying to get affordable housing. Hopefully, we can get it down to a number that um, the seniors will find attractive. Um, do you want to weigh in at this on this at all and give us some of your feedback? What you're thinking? Well, <laughs> I have been listening. This is the first time. I've been introduced to this project up on Foster Street, and I just, um, I actually 
resigned from the Council of Aging, but I was railroaded back to the housing, housing committee. So I'm back on board again. And we're just getting started again on housing. And I did do a lot of research on the computer about this project. And I, I don't ask me who was speaking earlier, I don't know. But um, oh. I love this project on the 40R thing. Okay. And we do need a few more housing things. Um, we, we realize we definitely need senior housing. We need affordable senior housing. And uh, yeah, we need it. It does need to be affordable. And the homestead is a whole different concept. It's a little more expensive than, well, the first, there's a few of them that'll pass for affordable for some people in town who might want to downgrade. But for some of them, it's still a little too expensive. Well, our hope is because of the density. But I think the more we some... work at it, we will. Pardon me. Um, where our hope here. is to get it. Our hope is to get more and more affordable, down below the eighty, down to the sixty. What's truly affordable for seniors? Yeah. That's that's what our goal is with this to yeah. get truly affordable units yeah. for the seniors. And I know the developer has expressed an interest in making sure that. Um, there's yeah. some affordability for the seniors as well. I don't want to speak for them, but I know in our meetings that they have reiterated that that is I, part of their I, goal as I, well. I was wondering up with this project, <clears throat> is it only this one complex of housing or are there going to be multiple complexes of housing? Well, we're going to start baby steps. Well, this is okay. little things. We're going to start with this this area right here see how it goes see how the residents in the town because obviously in order to keep this go up going up fast if we did decide to go up faster we'd have to come back to the town for another vote and another 40-hour overlay for the land that goes on but right now this is just the area that we're concentrating on because uh, uh, you know we we don't want to we want to start small and see how things go but I think also th this would be comprised of, a, of several different neighborhoods because we do want to have, as we've said, the diverse housing, not just for seniors, but also for empty nesters, for young, you know, singles or, or, or young couples. So um, I agree with that because I, work, really, work I was housing. interviewed by that Barrett uh, consulting um, agency that was um, it, a while ago and during the interview I was with somebody else and we were talking about yes seniors but also couples who work in Boston who could live in an apartment or a condo and like you were saying earlier walk to the train station mm -hmm. they wouldn't need a car because they could get a train and go wherever they want to go young people living outside the city, but want to go into the city. So I was, I know I'm way ahead of you there. I'll be long gone buried before it all gets done. But, you know, different complexes for different people, not just the seniors, although I'm focusing on seniors myself. But yeah, you're right, Mark. You were baby stepping, but I'm also thinking other people. Yep. But this was my first introduction to this project, other than being interviewed by the Barrett consulting firm. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else have any questions or concerns before we um, um, finish up here? I guess not. No. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll we'll get the uh, agenda out there early. We'll, we'll meet late February to answer questions, and planning board will start. Um, having public hearings on this in early March. And we look forward to your input and your, your um, participation in getting this ready for Springtown meeting. And I think um, uh, we're, I think everybody on the committee is cautiously optimistic that this could be really something great for the town of Littleton. And Delisa and Matthew and Chuck, uh, thank you for, and Joseph and Anthony, thank you all for your hard work in getting us to this point. And, Look forward to finishing it off and getting it ready for town meeting. And thank right, you. Okay too. Huh? Marin. Mark didn't do anything. 
I didn't do anything. No. Yes, you did. Are you kidding me? All your experience? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> well, well, thank you all. Great, great, uh, great meeting and great prospects here, too. Thank you. Thank yeah. you all. And we look forward to working with you, getting this to town, spring town meeting. And thank you, Myron. Myron's put a lot of time into this yeah. as well. Kudos to Myron. You know, yeah. behind the scenes, she does a lot. She does a lot with this and really gets credit for it. How was that? Thank, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I will get this um, slide presentation posted to the um, Littleton Station area page, um, and I, I will add the slide with 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 the team members on it. Um, the planning board meeting, um, we have posted board business in case there are any um, just board discussions we need to have about schedule or anything. Okay. Um, uh, next Thursday. Yeah, we meet like every week, right? Next Thursday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you all. So we, don't, keep so we don't need anything else, Mara. We don't need to discuss board business or anything like that. That, that's up to you. I, I didn't have anything for you. It's just oh. okay. if Mark had anything. Yeah. No, I'm good. I, okay. I don't think Mark has anything. He's just waiting for answers from us for some, some of the basic stuff. And uh, we'll keep, may, obviously make everybody, uh, keep everybody posted where we're going with this. And um, hopefully we'll see you uh, early March to start working on the, the final draft of this. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you all for coming. Have a good night, you. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Stay, Bye. stay warm. It's going to be cold tomorrow. Mara, do we you. need to formally adjourn? It wouldn't hurt. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to formally adjourn the joint meeting with the select board over the Wilton Station uh, committee draft, whatever. <laughs> so moved. Second. Jeff seconded it. Yeah, all those in favor. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you all. You. Bye. Bye.